It's been a while since the Gulf Coast has seen a hurricane. And if you forgot what it looks like, this is what it looks like. Saw some hints of some warmer weather on this Wednesday before Thanksgiving. How's it going to look tomorrow? Stay with us. News 4 at 10 starts now. We currently have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Crenshaw County for the next 30 minutes. Since this past Monday, when rain started entering our area, we've had over a foot of rainfall in some spots, and some of that rain has fallen just in the past 24 hours. If I were here this time two weeks ago on December 26th, when it reached that historic crest, I couldn't be standing here. I would be underwater. The water would be above my head. Just as we've been talking here, this rotation isn't quite as strong as it had been when it was further over the water. But nevertheless, it is about to move on shore right at Panama City. Based on radar last night, it definitely looked indicative of a tornado. It was a tornado worn storm. Even though this line has weakened as it's moved to the south and east, it is still producing some really potent wind gusts. I think there was a wind gust of about 50 miles per hour recorded at the Dothan Airport. We're going to see a cold front slowly sweep in behind it for Monday. So it feels cold now. Think about this. It's going to be even colder as we go into the next couple of days, potentially some of the coldest air we've seen all season. Friday morning, check this out. 50s on the map. It has been quite a few months since we've seen that. So if you like the weather today, we're looking at similar conditions for Sunday and Monday as well. So not looking like a bad Memorial Day weekend by any means. It is shaping up to be a beautiful day, whether you're near the water or farther inland. Make those outdoor plans. Oh, and look at that bird plans <laughs> perfectly when to fly by the sky cam. So even nature is enjoying how gorgeous this day is shaping up to be. I wish I were right here at Dolphin Island. I don't know about you, but that water looks so inviting. Sunshine seems to light the wiregrass lately, and a little birdie tells me it's going to stick around. Meteorologist Lauren Linehan joins us now for our first check on weather. Lauren. Hi, I'm that little birdie. <laughs> oh, we were really lucky on this one. So one last question. Paco, was it rough for you? Paco's not real big about the wind. And now from the Forewarned Storm Center, meteorologist Lauren Linehan. We're looking at mostly sunny skies over Defuniac Springs. And here at Lake Defuniac, if you notice here, that tree is rustling in the breeze just a little bit. So we do have a breeze, and it's one out of the north and east, which is making it feel so nice today and bringing in that much-needed burst of drier air. So you can see winds out of the north and east are making it feel like a pretty nice afternoon and slowly bringing in that drier air. You can see dew points for the first time in what seems like ages after this humid summer drop down to the 60s, so everyone's going to get there by tomorrow. But for now, we're looking at temperatures right around 90 degrees. 90 in Dothan and Ozark and Geneva and Troy. 90 over in Crestview as well. 93 in Destin and 88 in Defuniac Springs. Looks like the place to be on this afternoon. There's still a little bit of moisture in the air. I mean, it's dry for Alabama in the summertime, so it still feels like the upper 90s in some spots, but certainly not those widespread triple-digit heat indices like we've been seeing a lot of lately. Look at our radar. Very quiet picture. So that is more evidence of that dry air moving in. That's going to be the trend through the next couple of days. We have high pressure and control of the weather pattern. So we're sitting under this ridge here and that's going to be keeping us dry heading into the weekend. Still seeing some moisture off to our west, but that's not of any concern to us. Going into the weekend and through the overnight period, we're looking at skies clearing. So to wake you up on Friday morning, if you're as excited about it as I am, we're looking at lots of sunshine heading into the afternoon. Notice this too. Barely any showers popping up. If a little stray shower pops up, best chance for that would be in the panhandle closer to the coast. Areas inland going to be staying dry. So looking really nice and heading into Friday afternoon. Not too bad either. So looking good for Friday night football. And Saturday, we're looking once again at some sunshine, a few clouds passing through, but otherwise staying dry the next couple of days. So make those weekend plans. It's going to be a nice one. But we do need to talk about the tropics. We're still keeping our eye on a couple of systems here in the Atlantic. Tropical Storm Gaston, no threat to us, but we still want to keep an eye on Invest 99L. Now, if you've been watching the newscast, you'll notice this is just not looking very good right now. 
now in the terms of its weakening. So that's good news, but the storm itself just looks pretty disorganized. We don't still have a defined center of circulation, and you really need that to be able to try and forecast where the storm could go. Now, if it moves into more favorable area to the north and west of this, if it gets closer to the Bahamas, got warmer water there and also more favorable winds that could potentially help strengthen the storm a little bit, but it's really not holding together all that well right now. Nevertheless, it's something to watch. There's still a lot of uncertainty, so keep that in mind. Looking at our models here, most of them seem to agree. If this does hold together, it looks like the path for that would be through the Gulf. But another thing we're not sure of, the strength of this. Could it just be a tropical storm? Could it be nothing, just a few thunderstorms? Or could it be a hurricane? So we'll continue to keep you updated on that. It's just something you need to watch and we'll keep you updated. More sunshine for your Friday along the Gulf Coast. Again, going into the weekend, not looking too bad at all. That water temperature though, pretty balmy in the upper 80s. So certainly bath water. Heading into the next seven days, going through the weekend, we're looking at plenty of sunshine. A few clouds look to move in on Sunday. Past the weekend, that's when the forecast gets a little trickier. That's why we're keeping our eye on the tropics so we can pinpoint whether we could see some tropical weather next week or whether we would see any rain at all. So it's a toss up right now. But hey, short term this weekend is looking yes. nice. Yes, for tomorrow, looking great. In today's busy world, it is easy to get lost in the hustle and bustle of modern society. So from time to time, many of us just crave an escape. Into the wild here in the Wiregrass, you don't have to travel far to interact with some of the wildest creatures in the animal kingdom. News 4's Lauren Linehan has been exploring the conservation and rehabilitation efforts of different wildlife sanctuaries in our area. She's in the studio now to share their messages in her series, Wild at Heart. And Lauren, I do understand you can get up close and personal with wolves just an hour's drive from Dothan. That's right, Devin. When you picture sunny Florida, a wolf may not be the first image that comes to mind. But in Chipley, an organization is doing its part to conserve a potentially endangered species. Dogs, man's best friend. But in the Florida Panhandle, Cynthia and Wayne Watkins have 30 best friends. And they're all wolves. Animals can have very profound connections, our domesticated animals like our dogs, uh, but even with the wild species, if you work in a wildlife sanctuary like Seacrest, it is very humbling and a great honor to have these loving relationships with these amazing wild species. Gray wolves are native to higher latitudes in North America, but travel due south and you'll find some situated on a 430 acre farm just 40 miles below the Florida-Alabama line. The Watkins family has created a home for these wolves in an attempt to conserve and protect them. Ranching and hunting has put wolf populations on the decline in the continental U.S. By allowing one-on-one -on -one interactions between humans and wolves, Cynthia hopes this will raise awareness about their critical role in the natural world. These seacrest wolves here have been imprinted on and trained to be ambassadors for their species. That means they're wild cousins in the wild that are struggling to retain a place and to survive out there. Even though these wolves call North America home, just like in the wild, they live in different packs, each with an established hierarchy and family unit. And wolves love their children. When babies are born in the spring, the whole pack celebrates. The oldest alpha male and female are Kiowa and Mystic a retired couple spending their latter years fittingly in Florida in a closed off section of the preserve. They led a busy life leading conservation efforts through human interaction, setting the stage for many generations of wolves to come and see crest. Kiowa is 16, but would be considered 112 years old in human years. Despite his old age, he still views Cynthia as his mother figure, and she has nothing but doting praise for her oldest son. And it's very much an honor to live with this incredibly amazing species and all the things they teach us. They're great teachers. But these wolves don't just teach us about their species. 
They give a little insight to human relationships as well. And the way that they interact and how much they care for one another and they're always together, obviously, and side by side. And um, it's just very special being able to watch them and see them interact and how much you know, obvious love and care and respect they have for one another. It's something we should all strive for. For Alpha's Kiowa and Mystic, Seacrest intends to make their senior years as relaxing as possible, as thanks for doing their part to help their species and all animals who face endangerment. I spoke with Cynthia on the phone Monday, and she said Kiowa's health has declined rapidly since my visit back in January. But she says Kiowa has lived a long and fulfilling life. She's grateful for the impact he has had on the conservation of his species and helping humans to respect the animal kingdom. Devin?